They spoke about this fight before. He said, you all good, yeah? I said, no, it's a gimmick fight. It's not something that I think is right. Now, that's the biggest challenge of my life. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the challenge. Francis. I'm in boxer now. For my own legacy, I would do everything that's possible to take him down. If I wasn't in the fight, I would have been betting on AJ, but I'm in the fight, I'm betting on me. Here we go again. Francis Ngannou put the World Heavyweight Champion on his backside. Now, instead of just chasing money, he's going to be trying to chase greatness. I believe AJ is going to be undisputed champion. And in an instant, it's all over. This big, dangerous heavyweight is back. Boom. Boxers can't compete in MMA, and for the most part, MMA fighters can't do well in boxing. But there's one guy who has proven that theory wrong, and if he can do it on the 8th of March, it will be one of the greatest stories in the history of combat sports. The wolf is in the house. It really is an intriguing time. Anthony Joshua is now facing a man that in their first ever professional bout pushed the lineal heavyweight champion to the brink and nearly caused one of the biggest upsets in not only boxing, in sport. Please welcome the predator, Francis Ngannou. I've never known anybody to walk into a sport and compete. It's never been done before. So now we take him very seriously. And Ganu Fury was boxing versus MMA. But now it seems like the boxing community is adopting Francis, or at least accepting him. This fight, it is still MMA versus boxing, but it does feel a lot more like just, you know, a boxing match, which is tremendous, which is what Francis always wanted. I'm 72 next month. I've never seen anything or been involved in anything like this in boxing. This is just brilliant. And if you're a boxing fan, you're in boxing heaven. And Joshua, he's different than Tyson Fury. He is always learning and trying to be a better heavyweight. I feel like right now with him losing to Usyk twice, everybody he fights, he feel like he has to get back to being the number one guy because he was number one guy. Heavyweight champion of the world. I look at it, it's pure jeopardy for AJ. These big guys get in the ring, they throw bombs. One of them lands, it's all over. You're fighting number one and three back to back in your first boxing fights. That's crazy. I always done crazy stuff. <laughs> Are you not aware of it? <laughs> I'm aware. It all comes to a nice conclusion here. And we're going to find out if Francis Ngannou can go one better and really upset the odds. Or will this be a formality, frankly, Joshua, in this glamorous, exciting fight? It's perfect balance, perfect execution. Brilliant right hand from Joshua. That hook from Joshua. Wonderful variety. Beautiful shot. Oh, oh he got caught work. with a one-two piece, and he's up against the ropes. Oh, it's all over. Joshua's back. And Victor Peschenko scores it 116 to 112 for the winner by split decision. And still the unified heavyweight champion of the world from Ukraine, Alexander Husin. 
even talking about it now, it just makes me feel like, chokes up a bit. I wasn't supposed to lose in my head. And it just hurt the defeat. I think he's really angry. I think he felt he won that fight tonight. I think he did all he could. When you put everything into something, and what I gave wasn't enough, it's not easy. There's no silver medal in boxing. The only thing we get credit for is winning. On that night, a second defeat by the same fighter, and I thought this might be the end of him at this highest level. If we look back at his behaviour after the second fight against Alexander Usyk, when he was criticised for what he did in the ring with the belts and what he was saying, I think it's clear that it's been really difficult psychologically for Anthony Joshua. Strong. How did you beat me? Let's, let's do it. How? It was a mad time for him because he's thinking, do I get back to the, the pinnacle of, of, of the heavyweight division? Why am I getting beat by a guy who's half my size? After the aftermath, it's done. I lost, but I still have so much to gain. I came back to the UK for Christmas and then early Jan, um, we ended up going to Dallas, Texas to meet with Derek James. He's experienced absolutely everything the boxing can throw at you. He's had setbacks, the likes of the Andy Ruiz fight, now the Alexander Usyk fights. Everybody writes him off and says he's done. This lad is basically still a novice when it comes to boxing terms. I think he's had about 50 fights, 60 fights in his whole life. He's bypassed so many levels because of athletically, he's just so good. World Championship silver medalist, Olympic gold medalist, unified heavyweight champion. It's, it's insane. A peak AJ was probably the Vladimir Klitschko fight. It was phenomenal. Nearly ripped. Uh, Vladimir Klitschko head off with an uppercut. I think he was in the picture with the neck stretches about three foot. You look at Andy Joshua there and you go, do you know what, after that fight, you pretty much ticked every box. AJ's speed and development has gone so fast, he's always going to be playing catch up with the actual boxing experience because it's only them rounds of and years and years of being in the gym that allows you to gain that experience, and he's getting it now. And now, entering the arena, AJ Anthony Joshua! The three performances of Joshua across 2023, I think signal that he's coming back to something like his best. Good right hand behind it. He was heavily criticized for his performance first time out against Jermaine Franklin in London, the tough American. I think that's a performance that might actually age well. Good on the Oh, card. tremendous left uppercut, wonderful variety. I always felt like stamina was one of the issues that I was facing. So, you know, for me personally, to go on, go and get 12 rounds under, under my belt was really good. It gave me confidence that my stamina is improving and I'm ready to now like, let my hands go. And if, even if it goes 12 rounds, I have no worries. He boxed really well, I thought, but he didn't show any improvement on his mindset. And that was to, to step in with the jab. And I've seen this to Joshua for all the time. The jab wins him the fight. Be my commands at all time. Defend yourselves at all time. God bless, touch gloves. Robert Hellenius, who you know, was a decent fighter, like, like Andy Ruiz back in 2019, he's a decent fighter, but you think Joshua should have the better of him, but this new Joshua who lacks a bit of confidence, Helena's been a giant himself, who knows? And he didn't box great. It was a little tentative at times against Helenius. It was a little bit like, uh, are we gonna see another one of those performances? It's a good jab to the body. Helenius, late change, late replacement, completely different style. I think it was on like, the Friday of fight week or something like that. At first it was a bit, not challenging, but I had to download the information that Hellenius was presenting me. And once I'd done that, I knew what I had to do. The right hand that finished that fight against Hellenius is what everyone had been waiting for. That was why everyone was there at the O2 that night. Oh! oh that's oh, good. Oh, that's 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 good. Oh,
and in an instant, it's all over. The finish was great. And what was great about the finish, not that just not that everyone goes about the punch, it was the commitment to the attack. And listening to Derek James, he jabbed up, jabbed down, took the step with the front foot, and he threw the right hand right through his head and knocked him spark out. And I thought, he believes he can do it now. Anthony Joshua's fights of late have largely been built around the jabs. If there was ever an opponent for him to go back to being the seek and destroy fighter he was earlier in his career, it's Otto Ballin. Let's get ready to rumble! Last time out against Otto Wallin, and we see it again, this precise, accurate, hurtful punching. Uh, he's so exciting to watch, he's so hard to beat now. Ah, this is good boxing, really good stuff. Yeah. What motivated me the most, it was good, because I had all my enemies in one room. Promoters that had come together, that had trash taught me. Journalists that, that had come together, because they trash taught me. Fighters had to come together, that had trash taught me. So I was motivated to make my mark and stump my ground that day, to let them know I'm the king of the heavyweight division. That's that right hand to the body, it's a lovely shot. Well, against Otto Wallin, he grabbed the fight by the scruff of the neck. He got straight to the centre of the ring and he backed up exactly what he was saying in the, the build-up. Um, that he was going to bully, he was going to outgun, and he'd done that. After that Hellenius knockout, we would just see an anti-Joshua back to the old mentality, style of fighting, if you like. Oh, oh he got caught one. with a one-two piece and he's up against the ropes! It was the first time for a long time that I thought, yeah, this is Anthony Joshua, this is not the guy we've seen the last few years masquerading as, as Anthony Joshua, this is, this is him. And I thought it was a fantastic performance from the first round to the finish. He was just on that seek and destroy, I'm going to knock you out, I'm back, confidence is there, nobody's stopping me now, I'm levels above you. And it really, really turned some heads. Oh, it's over! They've stopped the fight! Confident, powerful, sharp, everything was firing on all cylinders. Joshua's back. I think what happened to him in 2023 has been a massive boost for his career. As far as rebuilding is concerned and finding that old, to use that word again, AJ, with the seek and destroy mentality, I think it was a box ticked. It was a successful 2023, but he wasn't the only one. Wow! Good left hook from Ngannou. Ngannou finding some big shots out of nowhere. Still plenty of fight in the man from Cameroon. Big shot from Ngannou, who dances after his success. Unbelievable scenes. Oh, big shot from Ngannou, who dances after his success. And suddenly, we have a fight. Wow! Tyson Fury down against Francis Ngannou. Unbelievable scenes. Tyson Fury underestimated Francis and didn't do his homework, didn't look him up and just kind of was like, oh, this is just a payday. I'm gonna beat this MMA fighter up. I don't think he took it seriously. And that's why he was able to shock Tyson Fury and put him on his back. It really is amazing to see Francis, you know, in these big events with all this fanfare and all these eyes and all this attention on him. Because you've got to imagine how far removed that is from his early life. From the beginning of Francis Ngannou's story, I mean, you know, he started from literally nothing. Leaving Cameroon, trying to find a, a better life for himself, better opportunities. The arduous journey that he went on to find himself in France and, and to try and find a boxing gym to walk into. This man has overcome so much. He's working in the sand mines in Cameroon for like a dollar a day and then he escapes and he's put in detention centers and he almost dies multiple times because he's on a raft and he's in the middle of nowhere. He's in Morocco and then he's in Spain and then he makes it to France. Like, the idea that this guy is even here, thriving, now as one of the most famous athletes in the world, is unfathomable. Yes, it was hard, not the good memories. I would say I'm grateful of the life that I had, of the path that I have, even though it was tough, but he led me here. 
but I wouldn't do it again if I was to choose it. <laughs> I always love movies, everything combat related. The first poster that I saw was a poster of Rambo in my dad's room. I think I was maybe five or four, and now I'm like, wow. Dreaming for a sport already was a problem. We didn't have any example of somebody that has succeeded from doing a sport like boxing. He was silly, according to people, even to dream about it. You should just focus on like being a good builder or a good carpenter or a good farmer. That's the limit. And now I'm like, man, yeah, but I'm not satisfied by that answer. The only reason why I ever thought of leaving Cameroon was to go somewhere uh, to find an opportunity to box. If it wasn't about boxing, I wouldn't leave my country at all. Just driven by the dream. He ends up in Paris and he's sleeping in a parking garage and he finds a gym and it just so happens to be an MMA gym and not a boxing gym. And the guys tell him like, yeah, great. I mean, like, look at that guy. Of course, I would love to train you, but I'm gonna train you in MMA. Everybody around is just talking about MMA, the sport that they wrestle, they go to the ground. I want no business to do with MMA. I want boxing, so But When I look back to the reason why I wanted to do boxing, I find the same element in MMA. The first fight was a tournament in Paris. Only thing that I get from that fight was two tickets, and it was 10 euro a ticket, so I gave it to a friend. Then four months after, in April 2014, I had another tournament. 2,000 euro was the price of that tournament. Did you win? Of course. I won. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on. When I receive a call from the UFC, it might not be what I wanted. I get something. I have to start somewhere. He has world ending power. The highlight reel nature of his knockouts. And we saw that all the way through his MMA career. Hit a bit of a struggle when he met Stipe Miocic. That was the only fight that I really like. Go to knock him out. He didn't go well. Then I went back and then have to deal with my demons at that moment. And then I look for the first flight to Cameroon. I was feeling so low about myself, so bad. And then I went home and then I had a warm welcome. They are celebrating me. The energy in Cameroon was so positive. And then after that, I came back and I come back to my reality. That was really where, for me, Nganu turned the corner. And after the point where he regrouped, he just terrorized the division all the way to the belt. All right, so this is gigantic news. This is massive news. Francis Ngannou is a quote unquote free man. And it appears at least for now that his UFC career is over. And if you look at his story, you know that boxing is that big itch that he never got to scratch. That was the original dream. People don't relinquish their heavyweight title in the UFC and venture into free agency without any idea of where they're gonna go. And to be able to then step into heavyweight boxing on the platform that he did and do what he did, he turned the world upside down in that moment. They scoffed at every single interview and move that he was making leading up to that point. And he gets the PFL deal and people are still scoffing. And then he gets the Tyson Fury fight and people are still scoffing. You guys not realize what this man has been through? His whole life has been following his dreams and overcoming the odds. And he prepares for the Fury fight. And what are they saying? You see that guy on the mitts? That's an amateur. He doesn't know what he's doing. This is going to be embarrassing. Fury's going to mop the floor with him. And then, of course, what happens? And even if you don't think he won the fight via the scorecards, he won the night. Now, everyone who was scoffing at him wants to be in business with him. You know, shout out to my friend Eddie Hearn. He was scoffing at him beforehand, and after that fight, he says, let's do the Nganu Joshua fight. I mean, how could you not smile? That's a beautiful thing. It's my game. It's gonna end on my way as I decide. I just go out to have fun, and great things happen. Joshua! As he goes into this Francis Ngannou fight, I do think we'll see the best of Anthony Joshua. I think it's great that he's manoeuvred himself around trainers because he'll pick bits up from all of them. I think he had an amazing trainer, Robert McCracken. I think he's experienced good times with Derek James. 
I don't care how we won it, I just wanted them to win. Now he's with Ben Davidson. Each and every chain will offer him a little bit of something. You just want to see him now progress on. I would like to see a bit more brute from AJ, and I do believe now with Ben Davidson, we can see that. More regular, short, sharp, change of tempo. I can see during the rounds against Otto Wallin taking on board everything Ben Davidson is saying, and that's real trust. Wow! Tyson Fury down against Francis and Garnu. I think it's important for him to jump on a Joshua early, try and really unsettle him by any means necessary. Get close to Joshua, make him feel your strength. He made Joshua look skinny at the press conference. So if he can push him back and put a panic on him, Joshua might unravel. Tiny advantage in height, but the depth of Vingano is ridiculous. He's a scary physical specimen. And of course AJ is as well, but I just don't think he's, he's witnessed anybody that can move him around in a clinch like Vingano is going to do. Francis Ngannou has got to get as close to Anthony Joshua as he can and just hit anything. There are so many different reasons why this fight could go south very, very quickly for AJ. He might get clipped with a big shot and feel his legs go all of a sudden. And if he hits the canvas, does he get back up and box clever like Fury does for the rest of the fight? I don't know as he does. But there are vulnerabilities. And I feel somebody like Anthony Joshua will be able to make the most of those. He limped back an awful lot, and though he took the sting out of the shot from Tyson Fury, he was caught with a lot of right hands, and I feel AJ, what he does really well, when he keeps things simple, is brings his feet in, double jab, and then throws the right hand. I expect AJ to win this fight through discipline, through educated pressure, through being smart, and through being better. Make him go new work. Franz Ngannou is not faster than anyone he's faced, he's not stronger than anyone he's faced. The only difference with this man is his mindset's on a whole different level. When you look at his background, where he's come from, what he's done to get where he's got, he's a bit of an enigma. But I just think if Josh goes in there and lets his hands go, he gets rid of Ngannou in double quick time. I feel like AJ is the perfect person for Ngannou to fight. Because if he cracks him, he can hurt him. We've seen him hurt. If he hurts him, he's going to rattle him, and if he rattles him, you might not be able to recover from that. And he's not quite as tricky as Fury, right? He's not quite as elusive. He's a bit more stiff and a bit more rigid. His head is going to be a bit more easy to connect with for, for me. It's a much better fight for Ngannou, this one is. This is what I'm interested in seeing, Ngannou up close. At range, at arm's length, there's only one winner. He cannot cannot be anti-Joshua at range. But for us, as spectators, that makes it very exciting. Because if he can get close to anti-Joshua, you never know. In the heavyweight game, one punch can change everything. I really do feel like it doesn't go the distance. I just see someone getting clocked. Oh! Knockout, it just comes naturally. We both are going to look for a knockout, which I don't think is a problem. We're going to find out if Francis Ngannou can go one better and really upset the odds. I think Ngannou is going to dump to fully and push AJ around. I heard that he does a heavy chin. I hope I had the opportunity to test that out. I'm driven by the dream, the statement that I want to make, my own legacy that I want to build. Or will this be a formality for Anthony Joshua? If the Joshua from the last fight turns up, I got a feeling he might go right through it. I'll do whatever it takes. I will be victorious. I have my own legacy, my own chapter, my own destiny. Knockout chaos. Knockout kills. Coming to Saudi Arabia, March 8th, live on the zone.